40,000 thoroughbreds are born every year. Only 20 of those who go on to racing careers will get into the most coveted horse race of all time, the mile and a quarter, Kentucky Derby, a race for three-year-old thoroughbreds. This is the true story of six very different trainers, often with their own personal challenges, chasing the dream of a lifetime to win the Kentucky Derby and watch their horse become a part of a storied history on the first Saturday in May. Filmed by the Hennigan Brothers, the first Saturday in May is a documentary following primarily six trainers with three-year-old colts on the Derby Trail, leading up to the 2006 Kentucky Derby, the 132nd running. In New York, we meet Frank Amante as the assistant trainer for Achilles of Troy. Now, a lot of people think this job's easy. This job ain't easy. In California, brother Derek is trained by Dan Hendricks. In 2004, a motorcycle accident left Hendricks paralyzed from the chest down. There's very, very few trainers that have made it to the Derby or won the Derby that didn't deserve it, that didn't work their asses off to get there. And that includes even the big barns. You know, their biggest advantage, though, is they start with 200 a year, the top horses. They should be there. Back in Kentucky, Dale Romans, born in Louisville, the home of Churchill Downs and the Kentucky Derby, is training his derby hopeful, Sharp Humor. The one question you get when you tell everybody anywhere you are in the country that you train racehorses is, have you run in the Kentucky Derby and have you won it? And my answer to both questions is no, and I hope to answer yes someday. On the Florida path to the Derby, a dirt route is an undefeated turf horse named Barbaro. They straighten away in the Tropical Park Derby. It's Barbaro on to the front. Mr. Silver back to second, then Lewis Michael and Wise River. But Barbaro going to remain undefeated. Three for three as he takes the Tropical Park. Congratulations to the Leo Stables. Michael Barbaro is trained by Michael Max. For number five, Barbaro, the winner of the 2006 Grade 3 Tropical Park Derby. My dad was a great show jumper. My favorite moment was when my father carried the, the flag in the closing ceremonies at the Atlanta Olympic Games. And halfway across the world in Dubai, Kentucky's own Kieran McLaughlin trains Jazil or Jazil for Sheikh Mohammed. When I first came, I just thought I came over in 1993 and looked it over and I could see that it was, you know, gonna, was a neat place and a, gonna be a fabulous place. I felt like it was the right move. It was a ballsy move at the time. I didn't know Dubai. I went to the library to look up where it was. <laughs> I was diagnosed with MS in 1998. This isn't a death sentence. It's what I've been dealt. I'm going to play it. It's such a high and lows game. And when you have a disease and other variables, you have to just realize that, hey, you're happy to get up every day and go to work whether you win or lose. In Arkansas, horseman Bob Holtus trains Lawyer Ron. I think he's probably the best horse I ever trained. Uh, yeah. You know, he has more natural talent. He can do things that uh, make you, uh, <laughs> you wonder how he could do it. Today, the Kentucky Derby assigns points to the top four finishers and races on the Derby Trail, with the top 20 horses with the most points nearly guaranteed a place in the Kentucky Derby starting gate. But in 2018, the Derby also offers berths to winners of a European and Japanese road to the Kentucky Derby. In 2006, qualifying for the Kentucky Derby meant you had to become one of the top 20 horses with the most earnings from graded stakes races, grade one being the highest class. Trainers condition their horses and test them at longer distances as the Derby trail progresses. In the winter, Del Romans takes his horses to Florida, where Michael Matz's trainee, Barbaro, prepares for his debut on dirt. We also get to see that a horse trainer's family learn not just all about the care of the horses, but how to play them. Did you bring your money? That brick. <laughs> okay. Here is the money. The money. One, two, three. Horses and poker. That's his thing right now. You're very good. How's the poker game, man? You got a brick in your pocket today? Huh? Can I borrow 200 until I get back to New York? He's good for it, Jake. 
the trail progresses closer to the final Kentucky Derby preps, with the final chances for horses to earn enough points to secure a position in the Kentucky Derby starting gate. Michael Matz's light prep race schedule for Barbaro draws criticism against the trainer because the Florida Derby will be his final prep, leaving an unconventional five-week layoff until the Kentucky Derby. If this horse doesn't win the goddamn race, I'm going to really get lambasted. I, I don't see that there's a problem. All his races were scheduled five and six weeks apart anyway. Yeah. Christ, you, the way they put in the paper, you think I'm, uh, I'm no, training you, him like a, yeah. through voodoo or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Little did they know, Matt's success with this schedule would actually go on to influence a trend on the Derby Trail. Sharp humor makes enough graded earnings to get into the Kentucky Derby, which will be the first one Del Romans has an entry in, and Barbaro will enter the Kentucky Derby undefeated. Frank Amonti is made a head trainer, but along with celebrating each step forward on the Derby trail, comes the stress and heartbreak of unexpected setbacks. What? I don't know, baby. I don't know. I don't know yet. Although derby horses attract the best, most experienced riders in the business, McLaughlin takes a chance on a young jockey whose riding style he thinks best suits his late running long shot, Jazzle or Jazil, 18 year old Fernando Hara. Keep it coming, keep it coming, get up for a second. Get up for a second. Get up for a second. But he had to run hard all the way to get there. Just get out. Out. Second, get yeah. up. It all culminates in the run for the roses under the famous twin spires of Churchill Downs. Although there are races that pay more, nothing is more cherished by fans and horsemen than the first jewel of the Triple Crown on the first Saturday in May. Speaking of closing argument, how much do you think about what, what might have been? I don't really because, you know, with 70 horses, you're thinking yeah. about what you're doing every day with each horse. If and what and could have been, I'm yeah. not one to look back at. But when you stop and really think about it, you say, holy, that close. <laughs> you know, you gotta say. While the trainers feel the excitement and pressure of Derby Day as post time draws closer, fans get into the Derby spirit and festivities. I like Barbaro. AP Warrior. Sweet and all the same. I like um, Deputy Glitter. Lawyer Ron. He sounds like a gay policeman, doesn't he? Jazil. I can't believe you're wearing those shoes. You need to go see Deputy Glitter immediately. Barbaro all the way. Point determined. Sharp humor. Lawyer Ron. The ladies. <laughs> Jazeel? Sheikh Hamdan said Jazzle and he's the boss, so whatever he says, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the pageantry, the betting, the, the, the fun, the, the beauty, just the whole thing's great. And everyone gets caught up in the emotions of the traditions and ceremony leading up to the greatest two minutes in sports. It's a feeling that the first Saturday in May captures perfectly, and watching this running of the Kentucky Derby for the umpteenth time this time as the climax of this fascinating documentary holds a very strong impact. The first Saturday in May does a great job not only capturing these trainers' pursuit of a dream, but following up on the aftermath in a Triple Crown series which had a shocking breakdown and resulted in incredible efforts to help Barbaro. For anyone interested or documentary fans, the first Saturday in May is a really good documentary a fascinating, insightful, funny, poignant, and entertaining movie strengthened by good editing and its soundtrack. For horse racing fans, the first Saturday in May is a must-have. I've had a lot of horse racing documentaries and movies, but this is something special. Not only is it well done, a very entertaining documentary capturing the emotions, aspirations, ups and downs, and the entertaining sense of humor of the people in our incredibly humbling sport, but it is as stirring as watching the next Kentucky Derby unfold before your eyes and remains a very affecting documentary. I give the first Saturday in May five garlands of roses out of five.